the thing. You've been playing your instrument a very long time, years, perhaps decades even. And there's a question that keeps coming up. Why do I still suck? You know all your scales. You know the altered scale. You know the diminished scale. You even know the difference between the half whole diminished and the whole half diminished. You know how to use them. And yet you still ask yourself, why do I still suck? You know a ton of tunes. You can accompany a horn player and a singer. You know some voicings. And when you go to improvise, one question keeps coming up. Why do I still suck? Well, if you've looked at this question in the past and you've been intimidated. I'm gonna fix that for you right now. Remember that whole very iconic ad that was on YouTube? Another guy just did the same ad for another company. Exactly the same wording. Anyway, we are gonna fix that today because we're gonna work on the one thing that really matters today and that is rhythmic vocabulary. You do not sound good unless you work on your rhythmic vocabulary and I'm betting that if you are still asking your question, why do I still suck? You haven't worked on your rhythmic vocabulary enough. I'm also going to let you in on a little secret here, and no educational YouTuber wants to tell you this, but this is totally true. And that is that they really don't. Notes don't matter at all. They don't. I know we talk about it here on triad pairs and pentatonics, and that's fine. And it's really fun and it's easy because we can math it out and we can work it to, uh, to the point where we think we sound good. But when it comes down to it and we play without any kind of sense of swing or syncopation or rhythmic vocabulary uh it sucks it does not matter and we're going to prove that today we're going to play without any kind of melodic or harmonic vocabulary just working on a rhythmic vocabulary and you're going to sound better than you have in a while um so we need to talk about uh syncopation and swing first of all if you're playing black american music or anything even slightly related to black american music you have to address syncopation and swing you know who knows a lot about syncopation and swing? This guy. Buddy Bolden invented that beat that we call the Big Four, that, that skip on the fourth beat, or so legend has it. The Big Four is when you accent the second, fourth beat of a march. In a straight, strict march, you'll be going, doom ch, doom ch, doom ch, doom ch, doom ch, doom ch. With the Big Four, you go, doom ch, doom ch, doom ch, go doom, oom ch, doom ch, doom ch, go doom, oom. So on that fourth beat, the drum and the cymbal hit together. And that point is where jazz music started to really get its lilt. Before the, the trumpets, they, they were playing. But now I have the big four. Boom, 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 da -dum, boom, da boom, 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 boom. That is, of course, Wynton Marsalis from Ken Burns' uh, jazz documentary. Incredible documentary. That's my favorite clip from it because Wynton spells it out so clearly what is important. And again, just to, to remind you all uh, this one important fact here. They seriously don't. It doesn't matter. What matters is what Wynton just uh, showed you there. So how do we get better at this? How do we work on rhythmic vocabulary? Well, you have to listen. And you can pick whatever artist that speaks to you. For me, the artist that encapsulates all of the great modern rhythmic language, rhythmic language that is still used today by the world's greatest musicians, is Thelonious Monk. So we're going to learn two Thelonious Monk tunes. We're not even going to learn the tune. We're just going to learn the rhythmic vocabulary of the tune. Here's the first one. Listen. <laughs> Listen again. Let's sing that rhythm. Do it again. Three and four. And Listen to Monk. Let's sing it again. Again. 
You see right there in the second bar, that's that big four that Winton was talking about, right? That's the big four, that anticipation of one so that it gets it off the grid. We're going to be talking a lot about that today. Using that syncopation, right? That anticipation of beats or those odd number quarter notes between phrases to make our rhythmic vocabulary come alive. You do not need to analyze your way through this. You cannot think your way through this. Rhythm is meant to be danced. So try to please feel your way through this. That's the quickest way to the promised land. I promise you, you cannot math your way through this. You just have to dance your way, all right? So we can talk about like, uh, this is seven beats between and that's why it's syncopated. That's cool, uh, but no, it's not. <laughs> we have to feel our way through it. You have to just be able to feel it. And that takes listening. Let's listen to Monk again. You know what I mean? Sing the rhythm with me. One, two, one, two, three, and goom, goom, goom. Goom, goom, doom, goom, 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 Notice those accents where Monk puts the accents, uses his left hand to accent that. We don't have to do that, but it is important to the rhythmic phrase. So let's practice this getting in our playing. Again, I want to prove to you that they seriously don't. So what are we going to do? We're going to practice this uh, with a nice little play along I have. A little bit slower tempo than what Monk is playing. Uh, this is from our Open Studio Jazz Piano Jump Start course. This is Bob DeBoo and Montez Coleman, not a bad rhythm section, to be playing some B-flat rhythm changes. It does not matter what the chord changes here are because it does not matter what notes you play. I'm going to give you four notes to play. B-flat, C, D-flat, and D. And yes, that is a D-flat and not a C-sharp. That is a flat third. That is all that matters, are those four notes. We're gonna do a whole form through rhythm changes. Doesn't matter what the chord changes are because it doesn't matter what the notes are. And all I want you to do is sing the rhythm here to rhythm and ning, Monk's rhythm and ning, and play along with that rhythm that you're singing, making the melody up as you go. Truly improvising using this rhythmic vocabulary. Stay strictly to the rhythmic vocabulary. We're going to go away from it because it, it, you don't have to be right on it all the time. But to start, let's see if we could just play this rhythm inserting our own notes and only these four notes, B flat, C, D flat, and D. You ready? Let's try it. I'm going to sing the rhythm over uh, the form here, even over the bridge so that you can follow along. But there is that notation there and you only get those four notes this is going to be this might be enlightening to some of you you want to try it here we go one two oh one two three you got it play that rhythm but only those four notes Whatever order you want. You know? Here's the bridge. Same rhythm. Last time. New chorus. Now don't play all of the notes. Same rhythm. But omit some notes. Keep the rhythm in your head. Start leaving notes out. Second A. Same rhythm. That big four. We're just doing this one rhythm. Da, 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 da
got just those four notes. Ooga, 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 ooga. <laughs> swinging. Did you feel how much more swinging you can be with a strong rhythmic vocabulary? Isn't that incredible? Isn't that amazing? Ah, oh, so much fun. That's what you need to be doing every day in your practice. Chances are you're spending a lot more time thinking about what notes you should play than how you should play the notes. There needs to be a reversal of that if you want to sound good. If you don't want to still suck, you need to flip that ratio of what you're working on. Get a stronger sense of swing, a stronger sense of syncopation, and really how you play them is important as well. Let's do one more chorus. I want you to keep these same four notes, right? I want you to keep this rhythm, but again, start subtracting how much you play. So if I were to do this, I would play about half of the notes in the rhythm. It would sound like this. I still have the rhythm going underneath in my head, right? So check it out. thinking that's all i'm thinking just that and i'm swinging harder than if i were to just you know play a bunch of nonsense right so let's try it again now how you play this matters too don't think that a little swagger doesn't matter because it does you can't go in here unsure of yourself with your rhythmic vocabulary it's not how this works you have to have a little bit of confidence as you go in and i know when we're doing anything new it's a little bit but come at it with um some kind of sense of security in the rhythm. Do you remember at that bonfire that you were at and you were telling that really funny story and you were you had a couple of drinks and you were completely relaxed and free with your friends and you were just lighting up the place. You were so funny and relaxed and easy and everything was just kind of coming out free. Do that here. Be that with this rhythm. Let's try it one more time. One more chorus. Here we go. One, two, oh, one, two. Uh, choose your notes wisely. Omit about 50% of everything you're singing. Last day section, you got to have fun. Uh, tell your story. Uh, have a little swagger, have a little mojo, have a little confidence. That's it. That's all you need. That's all we need. It's not that complicated. It really is not. It's really, really simple. Okay, so that's a pretty simple rhythm. What if we want to get a little more complicated? Well, then we should probably learn this tune. That's straight no chaser, right? Another monk tune. Let's listen again. It's pretty good, right? Let's try singing this rhythm. One, two, one, two, three, and a go go do ga, a do go do go do da. A do go do dot, a do go do dot, a do go dot, a do go do go what a do go do what, a do go do what, a do go do what a go do go do ga, do do ga, do ga, do a do go do what. Let's listen again. Let's try that rhythm again. See if you can get these accents. One, two, one, two, three. Ba ka tu ah, a tu 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 ka tu ah,
It's just talking. It's just talking. The syncopation here is so crucial. So if we look at where these phrases start, you can see Monk using a four note phrase in a three beat pattern, right? If we want to get super analytical about it, you can be like, oh, this starts here on beat one and then on beat four. And then on, it's a three beat thing in a four, four measure. Doesn't, that doesn't matter. Just feel it. Just dance it. Try not to overanalyze it. Just try to live it a little bit. Try to breathe it a little bit. Try to swim in it a little bit and it'll be a whole hell of a lot easier. And again, this is just this whole rhythm. I mean, you could literally, you could Clark Terry this. It's just a conversation. It's a rhythmic conversation that happens over uh, a very standard 4-4 four -four rhythm and it's in these little chunks of three beats, which make it syncopation. But again, we don't need to redefine that. Okay, let's do the same exercise. And again, I really wanna to prove to you that they really don't. They couldn't matter less, as a matter of fact. That pains me to say that as a music theory nerd, but they just don't in this context. Uh, and to prove that, we're gonna play over a B-flat blues, and here are your note choices, everything. Chromatic scale, whatever you want to do. A B-flat blues, all we need to do is use the rhythm from Straight Note Chaser. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Two, three. little rhythmic confidence, a little bit of swagger, and some swing and syncopation. And once again, they really don't. It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter as long as you have this. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can take our straight note chaser rhythm. And any note is possible here. I was really trying to get some good shapes, some good spaces here. You're going to find that this sounds a lot better than playing all the right notes on a B flat blues and it just feeling really wet and not great. Let's try it here. You got it. One, two. I'll sing the rhythm for you. Try it again. You got it. One more time. It's a game changer, isn't it? Just with random notes, you're going to sound a lot more secure, a lot better than without. Okay, let's do a full four chorus play along of this B flat blues. This is for you to do anything you want. You can choose whatever you notes, notes you want, the, maybe the blues scale, maybe you actually try to play through the changes of a B-flat blues, but I want you to still keep the rhythm to Straight Note Chaser in your heart. And that doesn't mean you play every single note. Again, you can take notes out. Maybe you play a bunch of them, maybe you play just minimal as much as you want. But keep that melody, that rhythmic vocabulary, super strong in your mind as you're going through. It's a great exercise for getting out of just the running changes and here's the notes to play and all that crap. Just ignore that. Have fun. We're going to go out with that. 
Till next time, everybody. Happy practicing. Enjoy. One, two. Oh, one, two, three.